Hey guys, um, some time ago I have made a tutorial on absorptions uh, of azobenzenes in THF. And while that tutorial was kind of just an intro to show you the keywords that are available and um, just a, a very um, general kind of uh, overview of the possibilities, uh, in this tutorial here I want to focus more on um, the solvent effect and how to deal with the presence of solvent if you want to look at the excitation of a molecule. The example that we're going to be working with today uh, is explained in detail in the Gaussian uh, user manual uh, if you search for the SCRF keyword and scroll kind of halfway through the page. You're going to hit this example here and um, in this tutorial I will basically go through the steps that they provide and explain um, how everything happens. To begin, I redrew their graph um, a little bit more uh, colorfully and uh, today we will really focus on this left part of the graph and for part two of this tutorial we will look more on the right part. Let's start at the left bottom corner where both the solute and the solvent are in the ground state. Um, so this is a normal calculation uh, of equilibrium um, that we're very used to, get to compute and we will also look at the frequencies um, to make sure that the geometry that we obtain is actually an energy minimum. The input for this calculation looks like this and uh, the coordinates have just been copy pasted from the Gaussian manual as well as the, um, the keyword line here where I want to pay your uh, attention to is the first line here where you ask Gaussian to create a checkpoint file with this specific name and this uh, is an important feature to add to your calculation because we will use this file as input for other steps of our calculation. Okay, so when you run this calculation, you will get um, the output file from step one, and you will also get this checkpoint file from step one. If you open it in Notepad, it will look crazy because it's not a text file. But what this file contains is a lot of important information from your calculation that you just ran. And you can use it to speed up your other calculations that will be based on this one. And we will use it um, for our step two and step three. So. Uh, in step one, we obtained the um, energy at ground state uh, in the solvent. So our molecule looks like this. This is the geometry um, of acetaldehyde uh, in the ground state. And the frequency that we calculated are all positive. So we are at an energy minimum and we're ready to continue with our step two and three. Now, the difference between step two and step three is the follows. Uh, the step two is like a shortcut. If you want to compute your energy of excitation approximately, you can go on with the shortcut and basically um, use the output from step one as input for step two and calculate the excitation of acetaldehyde. This calculation is not a geometry optimization, this is a single point. So what happens when you do this is that you promote the acetaldehyde into its excited state, but because you do not optimize uh, your system, then the solvent does not have time to adjust itself to the new excited solute. But this is a little bit kind of cheating because um, you don't um, explicitly give the solvent as it should be. You kind of 
just perturb the, your system, but you don't let it catch on anything. So because it's a single point, it's an approximate calculation. And the um, energy that you get from the excited state uh, of acetaldehyde is this uh, 4.38 about electron volts. So keep this in mind because we will compare this output with the output from a more um, careful calculation, which is step three. Now, I just want to pay um, attention to the input for step two, because if you compare what I have here with what Gaussian provides as header, you will notice a crucial difference. And it took me some time to figure this out. They use this keyword old checkpoint and new checkpoint, kind of. Um, but my Gaussian crashes when I use this old checkpoint uh, file keyword. So I could not use that. Um, and what I did instead of having two different checkpoints, the old and the current one, is that I used um, the checkpoint file from the previous calculation. So basically for step two, what I did is I took this uh, the checkpoint file from step one, I made a copy of it, and then I renamed it to the one that I will be using in step two. Okay, so what happens is that in the end, when we start calculation two, whatever is stored in this file right now is the output from calculation one. When the run uh, completes, then Gaussian overwrites whatever was there before with any new information from this run. And I did that basically for all of them. Now, step three, that was step two, it, it's just a single point calculation, okay? And we have the result summarized here. Now, step three is a two-part process. Part one is the calculation um, of the, the solvent as if it surrounds a molecule in the ground state. So, kind of, you want to save the solvent as it was here, that was that would be 3.1 and step 3.2 is we want to excite the solute molecule but preserve the solvent as it was before so to do this you need this kind of input first of all the two parts of the uh, step 3 are separated by this link one separator um, then here, the 03 checkpoint is actually a renamed copy of checkpoint file 01 from step 1, um, which in this first part will be overwritten um, with the new information from this part 1. And this info will be used here in the second step. Um, where we want to read the solvent as in ground state and then run a TDDFT on the uh, solute to see how it will be um, excited when surrounded with our solvent. Okay, and this is done with this additional keyword non-equilibrium write and non-equilibrium read. So this saves the solvent and this reads the solvent state. Um, so the output of this calculation, um, in the last line of this output, you will see something like after PCM corrections, the energy is this. And now for us to um, calculate the more accurate energy of excitation, we will need to do uh, the following. We will subtract the energy obtained in step one. Um, well, we will subtract from this energy, the energy that we obtained in step 3.2. So just uh, very simple math here, and we get 
point uh, uh, 4.46 electron volts so it's about uh, 277 ish nanometers so we're basically um, close but not exactly the same number therefore the um, take-home message from this part is that if you want the approximate um, energy you can do this a little bit um, faster just by doing a step two um, which is a single point or you can do this two-step uh, calculation but then you get um, a bit more um, precise number on this i will stop this uh, tutorial as part one and i will see you in part two where we will look at how to compute the energy of emission of the same um, acetaldehyde in surrounded by solvent molecules